In a world full of conventional Hollywood cliches and recurring lackluster sequels, one critic has seen it all who can provide you with all the movie news, opinions, and reviews that could very well save humanity as we know it. This is Libby's Movie Hunt. And now, your host, Libby Hunt. Hi there, welcome to Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt, along with my co-hosts, Kevin E. and Zach. Hey, how are you? And hey. we have two special guests today. Ryan Birdman Parrot. Hello. And Mary Meyer Evans. Yes, hi Libby. It's so good to have y'all here. Thank you for having us. It's so f- much fun. Mary is a longtime friend of mine. We are longtime long friends. Time, long history. We even went to high school together. Yes, we did. I knew her when she was on the drill team. Yes, I ma'am. Am. Back in the day. With the fringe. Um, it's, Mary has a long history of nonprofit work here in Dallas. I mean, she's been president of the Junior League, did the Ronald McDonald and Old Gala. Um, Genesis Women's Shelter Alliance, Crystal Charity Ball we worked on together. Yes. And now you are Director of Development for Sons of the Flag. Yes. So. It, it, this is the greatest gig I've ever had, getting to serve with this man sitting next to me right. and, and really pour into helping our veterans and first responders. Well, Ryan is pretty uh, – you're lucky to have Mary. And I, Mary, I know you're lucky to be with Ryan. Brian Birdman Parrot, you'll have to tell us about that. But you're President and CEO of – Sons, Sons of, of the Flag, flag yes. which you started in 2012. That's correct. 2012. And uh, it, you enl- tell about your story, how you enlisted the Navy after 9-11, and then how Sons of the Flag got started. Certainly. But first of all, we, we will get to in a minute, too, they are doing a film festival for Sons of the Flag next weekend. But we'll get to that. Let's, let's hear a little bit from Birdman. Sure. <laughs> well, it's a good story about Birdman. So I did enlist in the Navy after 9-11. Um, I think everybody that day felt compelled to do something for their country. And so my idea was to go in the Navy and try out for the Special Forces. I was very lucky to make it through the program and become a Navy SEAL. And I was attached to SEAL Team 7 Alpha Platoon, where I served uh, the eight years of my career there. Wow. So uh, impressive. Well, thank you. I'm so impressed with Navy SEALs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're like superheroes. <laughs> really. Super- the, yeah. best well, the best of the best of the best. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we work very hard to uphold that title that's so neat but um yeah so on my first deployment you know we you just like any other military soldier you go overseas to do the job and you know unfortunately for us we were hit by an IED and um it blew our Hummer pretty much apart and I I received first degree burns and everybody in the car received injuries from that last wound um where were your burns my burns were on my face and hands very superficial burns I don't yeah I don't see anything now Mm -hmm. yeah first degrees usually heal right so second third they get worse and they don't so and that's what my teammates dealt with so you know like a good soldier you you rehabilitate from your wounds and you go back overseas and you fight some more until you've had enough and I got out moved to Dallas Texas in 2010 and I had the privilege of meeting an army captain who was severely burned and we related to each other Ultimately, his burns were a lot worse than ours, and mm-hmm. I've never seen disfigurement like that. Oh. And that's really the, the pinnacle moment when I started Sons of the Flag, was meeting him and seeing his injuries and knowing that I didn't know a way to adjust or um, help him. Well, so you decided to help veterans that have burn. Inst- I mean, there's all kinds of injuries. Why did you focus on burn because of your you know, your accident when you were over there? Well, I looked at the background of prosthetics. You know, a lot of injuries you receive overseas are gunshot wounds, your um, blast wounds, mm-hmm. moves, lissing limbs. You can adjust for that and fix that. You know, the technology is there. Right. Burns is another issue, and it's not. The technology is not there. In fact, it's the same since the Vietnam War. It probably so hasn't changed. It yes. has not changed. And so that's what the idea was, is we're so far behind the power curve, yet these men and women who are going overseas are injured like this. How do we help them? Right. And it's such a, a horrible life-altering injury, a disfiguring injury, that it's a shame that it's so far behind the power curve. Well, when, so the money you raise for the burn, where does, how does it help them? Like, so, so we look at it from a grand scale and say, you know, we could individually help each person as we mm-hmm. meet them. But the grand scale is we look at 40 years, nothing's changed. So what do we have to do? We really have to change the, the pinnacle um, problem, which is research and development. Mm-hmm. Let's get the future closer to today or bring the future closer to today by investing in research and development and bringing new doctors to the table that are younger, 
hungry to train and to learn and to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So that 40 years from now, people will say, I'm glad that somebody stepped up to help out burn patients because I can go to the hospital now and get fixed and get back on my feet versus live the rest of their life in limbo, not knowing where to go. So we're thinking about the future right That's now. That's so true. You really, that you're right. That is an area of medicine that hasn't had a, a lot of change, you Thank know, help. Yeah, it's, it's challenging and really burn survivors can have as many as a hundred or more surgeries right. and still never be fixed. And think about what, what it's like to just have one surgery in your life. Mm -hmm. Think about that a hundred times over, oh, gosh. you know, so if we can shorten that and, and, and make, make those surgeries, make that treatment more effective. Oh my gosh, what an improvement in life that will be for firefighters, for soldiers and even civilians that so have been it, burned. It, yes. Well, your money, does it go towards a certain hospital? Like I know Parkland has a burn unit that's so famous. So where we do. We have partnered with the majority of the top burn units in the country. Um, that's really worked through. Uh, mm -hmm. We built a scientific board from doctors at each one of these mm -hmm. hospitals. Um, and so we do place money in each one of the hospitals, either within research panels or uh, which our primary function is uh, the fellowship program to hire new doctors to become burn surgeons. Mm -hmm. What is the, um, what about the veterans hospital here in Dallas? Do you work with that? We do not work with the veterans or the VA. Mm -hmm. We work VA, with uh, I mean, Brook yes. Army Medical Center uh -huh. down at Bampsey where we just established a relationship with them. And so that's active duty. And so now this organization started as a veteran organization and quickly realized that this relates to firefighters, this relates to EMS, police, and uh, civilians, all adult ages uh, to pediatrics. So really a burn is a burn. We have to cover down on all. Well, so your money you raise goes outside of just veterans. Absolutely. That's correct. Okay. How cool is that? <laughs> so besides the film festival, which we'll get to, do you have other fundraisers? For we, Sons of the Flag? We certainly have this year. We, uh, we do some private and some public events, and uh, we have a really cool event called Country for Country where we bring in a country music artist. And we have a little, uh, what do you call it, a honky tonk? Yes. Deal. yes I'm, I'm not from you. Texas. So I'm you're from Michigan. I'm trying you? to work on my honky tonk <laughs> skills. But, so we have a honky tonk, and, and that's pretty, uh, pretty cool for us. And then we also have a stair climb to memorialize 9 11. We call that Climb for a Calling. Oh, yeah. I won't be doing that. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Where, 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 where do they climb? So we uh, Burnett Plaza at the Burnett Tower in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, neat. We did uh, 110 stories. <gasps> did you do it, Mary? I, I didn't. I, I cheered everybody on yeah. from the ground. So. I'll come cheer y'all on. <laughs> right? That's not my skill set, I don't think. But I mean, shoot, you're a Navy SEAL. You probably could do that, that in minutes. Yeah, oh, well, I try. <laughs> I tried. But so unique, th unique thing to this is we host events here in Dallas because mm -hmm. we're headquartered here. But we've built a task force around the country. So we have multiple firefighters around the country, over uh, 20 states of firefighters that actually harbor Sons of the Flag in their area or run a chapter. Okay. And so they host events around the country. So we always have something going on, and uh, we're spreading the word across the country. So this is – I'm so proud of you for starting this. <laughs> this is so neat. Okay, we're going to go to break, and when we get right back, we'll talk about the film festival. Yay! Libby's Movie Hunt. Thanks. This is Libby's Movie Hunt on RNCN. Hilarious. Okay, welcome back to Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt, with Kevin E., Zach, and Mary Evans. Hello, hello. Hey. And Ryan Parrott. Hello. So uh, they are with Sons of the Flag, and we're going to talk about their film festival in a minute. Ryan is a former Navy SEAL who served our country, and thank you so much. We appreciate your service. Thank I mean, you. we just cannot thank you enough for protecting our wonderful country so thank you and how'd you get your nickname because parrot birdman you'd think but actually my nickname started in the military as soup and my other new guy was sandwich so. oh and then uh it's a funny story you never get my a favorite lunch me. combo <laughs> that's go. not very cool though right? <laughs> how did that exactly. happen cool. yeah well we're new so we don't get the nickname we choose mm -hmm. and then uh, 2005, we got blown up, and I went flying out of the turret. And so that's why I got Birdman, is because I went flying. Oh, that's a good story. Yeah. So it's Birdman, see, you really are a superhero. <laughs> he flies. <laughs> that's a pretty action-packed story there. Yeah, I'm glad we came back with such exciting music. It kind of all ties in. <laughs> that is so neat. Well, also, Ryan has written a book called Sons of the Flag, and it's real accounts from the last hundred years of American service. And no, I, that's correct. Can, where can we find it? You can find it on Amazon, hard soft cover and uh, ebook too. So, did you write the book before you started the organization, the nonprofit? I started after. Afterwards, okay. 
Yeah. Did wow. you voice your own ebook just out of curiosity? I did not. No. <laughs> I, I, did. I mean, you got a good voice. I sound just it? like him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard reading. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I, the book was uh, just kind of a nutshell. I, I wanted to tell stories of different soldiers that served and why they served, because that's the one pinnacle thing missing is it's all about why. You know, mm -hmm. we all know what SEALs do, what other military branches do, but why do they do what they do? What makes them tick? And so I went to a soldier from every war, from World War II to present day, oh, and neat. in chronological order, we walked it all the way back to World War II, asking their why. The greatest the generation. That's right. Didn't Tom Brokoff write that yes, book? Yes, yes, he this, did. That, this reminds me of that. I can't, I can't wait God, to read it. That's a high compliment. Oh, yes. thank you. Even Tom. It's, yeah. it, hey, it's written by a fifth grader, so it's an easy <laughs> read for anybody who's checking it out. <laughs> well, I have to get it. My husband and son are avid readers, and uh, I can't fit in reading now that I see so many movies right. and watch TV, so many TV shows. But, okay, so they're real, you know, since this is Libby's Movie Hunt, we, they have a film festival that is one of their benefits. Yes. Four Sons of the Flag. And it, tell us about it. It's next weekend. Yes. We are kicking it off on Veterans Day. Friday is Veterans Day coming oh, up. That's in case so everybody neat. wasn't aware. So we start off with a luncheon, and then our first film is Friday night, and we go through Sunday afternoon. Highland Park Village here in Dallas, Dallas is very graciously sponsoring our film festival. We're really excited to be there. And, uh, the, have the you have you guys heard of the film festival? No, I'm I know a lot familiar. of people aren't it, since it's pretty new. It is new. I've been the past couple of years and it's so much fun because they all pretty much war time kind of movies. It is always films about war, but but unlike traditional film festivals where you're screening films that are that are new films right. or you know films that people want to see in wider distribution, these are all films that everybody has seen. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at the list of what we're showing this year, Hamburger Hill, South Pacific. These are films mm -hmm. that everybody knows, but the difference with our film festival is that we bring in a veteran or a content area expert to talk about the battle that you're seeing on the screen and talk about what it was really like to storm the beaches of Normandy. Wow. What was it really like, you know, to... Um, you know, fly a plane in the Air Force during Vietnam. So it's really oral history uh -huh. and a film all in uh, one. It sounds like my, doesn't that sound neat? We have to go. Yeah, I love that. I mean, and, the, and at your luncheon you're having, um, the keynote speaker is... Congressman Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson, who's uh, a great Fantastic speaker. Wow. leader and uh, a Vietnam veteran. He was a prisoner of war mm -hmm. um, at the Hanoi Hilton. And we are just so humbled that he is taking time on Veterans Day to be at our event. I know that he'll have a lot of interesting things to say. And certainly three days after the election is over uh, you know i think it'll be particularly interesting to hear from um, an elected official and a veteran and a hero what's going to happen with our yes. future who was the speaker at last year's luncheon general tommy franks and you're friends with him aren't you i am and he thought i because i remember being there and just y'all have such a neat bond it seemed like he's an amazing man oh my goodness we've been very blessed these last two years for our speakers to have real everyday living heroes oh come speak to you know the crowd and you know, sitting up there on stage, I'm, I don't feel worthy. It's, uh -huh. That's how much respect I have for these men. Um, and sometimes when I was talking, I forgot what to say because <laughs> I was in awe with their answers. I was in awe. Well, I, yeah. I remember crying at that luncheon over y'all's relationship and just what an awe of our country and what you do and what he had to say. And he was just – what I loved – and he a Texan too. Yes. He was just so funny. In his he went to the University of Texas. Yes. He was really funny. It was, it was a I great I think he luncheon. lives in Oklahoma now. But, is um, your luncheon sold out? Can it you, is not sold what, out. How can they get tickets? Thank you for asking that. They can go to our website, mm -hmm. sonsoftheflag.org, mm -hmm. and follow the links. Uh, we would love to, to see seats. more people there. And the film festival. That's how they can Absolutely, buy yes. tickets. Absolutely, yes. Pre-Kindle um, graciously offers their services so that people can buy tickets oh. online for our okay. film festival. They're a great partner of ours, and so you can follow the links, look at the films, read about the bios of our speakers, all on our website. And you could just kind of show up at the film festival and buy the tickets yes. there. I think that's what I did last year. Yes, you can buy tickets at the door. We'll go down the list and tell us what I have it here, but I'll let you tell us what's going to be playing at the film festival. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the film, and then Ryan can talk about the veteran, because he's really got a lot of these veterans or relationships of his or friends of his, but... Friday night, our film is An Officer and a Gentleman with Richard Gere. I know, right? Love All the it. ladies take a deep breath yes. about Richard Gere and his dress whites. And he takes her off in I know. His arms. Super romance. It's a Cinderella story. It is. We're very excited about An Officer and a Gentleman. And then uh, Travis Allison is our speaker. 
Travis Allison, he's new to Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great guy, great friend of mine. A uh, young stud who actually was a fighter pilot in the Navy and actually a Top Gun fighter pilot. Oh, cool. So. Y'all showed Top Gun last year. Yeah, or our I first think, year. Or the I first think year. our first year, yes. Yeah, mm, yeah I know, that. right? Tom what Cruise. is nothing bad about that <laughs> film? Wow. Then Saturday, this is really exciting. Um, our film, our first film, is called Minesweeper, and it's a very old film, black and white. It's only an hour long. But the in, really the interesting part about that film is our speaker. Um, Mr. Bill Dawson is coming, and he is the oldest living equivalent of a Navy SEAL. He was a Navy SEAL before they were called Navy SEALs. Yeah, and Ryan he, can explain more about that. He's the only uh, living um, Navy SEAL from Class 1. Oh. He's the only remaining class That's member. That's pretty neat. Yeah, so he's, he's really, I mean, William Bill Dawson. He's what they call the bullfrog. He's the oldest guy in the pond. <laughs> so after the film, these men will, will stand up and do like a little Q and A, yes. like they do at film festivals. Exactly. But they'll be won't really be talking about the film, but they'll be talking about whatever you want to. Talk and about. in some cases, they do. I mean, it's kind of interesting to hear the speakers reflect on what we see on screen mm -hmm. and how accurate is that? What was it really like? You know, and in some cases, some films are very accurate, and they're not documentaries. In exactly. some cases, you know, it's it's very fictionalized, but it's interesting just to hear about their perspective. That's so fun. Well, uh, what about, okay, the sun, okay, then what's the next film? Are we getting close to a break? Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back and talk about the rest of the films. This is Libby's Movie Hunt on RNCN. Live, Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt. Back with Kevin, Zach. Hey. Kristen's over here, too. We've got Mary Evans and Ryan Parrott, our fabulous Navy SEAL, who we're so proud of. We're talking about the Sons of the Flag Film Festival. And they, it, um, it's their charity event for Sons of the Flag Charity. Their film festival is next weekend. And we had just talked about two films. They start starts November 11th and ends November 13th. Yes. And the third film they'll premier be premiering is... Is Glory, which is really oh. such a great film about the Civil War. And clearly, you know, it, traditionally we have a veteran come and speak. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get a veteran from the Civil War to come and speak. <laughs> we tried, though. We did, we did try. <laughs> well, this is uh, Matthew um, Broderick's yes. in it. Yes. Denzel, Denzel Washington. 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 I mean, it's Academy such a good film. It's it. such a good film. And Richard McCaslin, who's coming to speak, is the head of the history department at the University of North Texas. Mm -hmm. And he has several books out and, and is an expert about the Civil War. So it'll be very interesting to hear, you know, sort of his, his take on how that particular battle, how those particular soldiers were represented in this film. So... With them, See, I, really? I, 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 I told class. you I forget to turn your mic they're on. Film, so. Oh, right. they're film majors. <laughs> the oh my gosh! Yeah, you and too. Yeah, the old alma mater. He, yeah, he's yeah. a he is so well respected in the field. Oh, so he's brilliant. We're really honored. That well, you know, there's such you Civil War buffs out there. Yes, I mean, this will be for them then. Absolutely. Then our last film, I'll let you talk about it because this was the film that I think you were maybe most excited about. Our Saturday evening film. <laughs> You want me to tell everybody? Yes, because okay. it's your film. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So we each have our own film, apparently. Okay. <laughs> this, this year she got one that she's wanted for all three years. We've done this now. Mine is Iron Eagle. It's a kid's movie. Growing up, it's, uh, it was like an 80s movie that talked about this uh, Air Force pilot, um, which was a father, and the son grew up wanting to be his father, and his father goes overseas and gets shot down and has to be recovered. So his son actually becomes a pilot instantaneously grabs a military vessel flies over there to save his father as a fighter pilot isn't that so, awesome super oh. fictitious movie incredible and i mean what kid watching this movie doesn't want to believe that they can do it and do that and so we're bringing an air force um, pilot to be able to talk about what it's like to grow up wanting to be an air force pilot um, and it's interesting so his name is pj putnam and uh he's gone he's done ranges from being a huey pilot helicopter pilot all the way to uh, being an instructor teaching other students how to fly. So he's really lived that lifestyle in real life of this fictitious movie. So not only do you get to have fun in that magical That's moment, it's a good movie to bring your kids to as well. It's a fun family uh, film but also to really learn what it takes to be a technical sealed pilot. Well, that's good, and that's good to offer something that you could bring your kids yes, to. Yes, definitely. People Absolutely. out there, you could take your kids to this yes. one. Yes. And your last one is? The last two films on Sunday, Hamburger Hill, 
uh, about Vietnam. Vietnam is always hard. You know, that I think our, the soldiers that returned at the end of that war certainly did not enjoy what soldiers enjoy now. They did not get the thank you for your service oh, no, in the way that soldiers do now. So it's important to us to honor our Vietnam veterans. And so Hamburger Hill will be a great film and Jess Johnson will be a fantastic speaker, highly respected. And then the last film, yes, is the one that I have been lobbying for for three years. Thank you, Boss Man, yes. for letting me finally have it. That's South Pacific. Yay, a musical. Yay, I know. I'm very excited about South Pacific. And Sean Griffin is a professor at SMU, actually is an expert about the golden age of the big musicals. And um, so he will have a lot of interesting things to say about production and all of the things that went into this huge, big musical you know, movies. Classic movies. Yes, the Mimi, classic movies. the star of it, Mimi, um, who played... Oh, I oh, can't think I, of, um, I can't think of her I know, we'll think of it a second with blonde hair. I know Gorgeous. I should know. Gorgeous. I know. I just, you want to sing, I want to wash that man right out of my yes, hair. Yes, wash that man right out of my hair. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So I'm excited. And that's a great, another film that you definitely, any age person can come to. It is, you know, not a heavy film. And how long has it been since we've seen that film on the big screen? I'm going. Right? I mean, I want to see all these, but especially yes. that one. I know. That. I'm excited. And if you do come, Mary said that she's going to do a full singing rendition. I'm absolutely singing through Live. the entire Ooh, film. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to watch that. <laughs> Who doesn't want to miss that, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, this is so neat. So tell me, tell us again, the listeners, how they can get tickets to the luncheon or the film festival. Yes, you can go to our website, which is sons with an S, sonsoftheflag.org and follow the links to the Stars and Stripes Film Festival and Luncheon. We're really grateful to Clay Cooley Auto Group, mm -hmm. who sponsors our luncheon, and to Stripe a Zone, who is the sponsor of our film festival. We could not do it without those partners. Thanks. So I hope that people will take a look at the schedule and find a film that looks interesting and so they, can be a part. They underwrote it so basically all the money that's raised gets to go to your charity yes absolutely we, we could great. not do it without our corporate sponsors and we're very grateful for their participation and definitely that's so neat yeah it's a fun weekend what else so these is it hard because i go see the old films every tuesday night at the magnolia they show old yes, classics yes and they say it's kind of hard to get their hands on some of these films have y'all had a hard time getting a hold of any or is it pretty easy yes no you have to go through, it's a process it's hard remember Patton? oh yeah last year mm -hmm. yeah we were we we've been very very lucky with the dallas film society has helped us negotiate that i wondered is that how they're doing yes dallas james film faust society? is their artistic director as you know and he is fantastic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh so, that's great but yeah those old films are hard yes. we thought we had Patton last year and they couldn't find a copy of it in 35 millimeter and it, they couldn't bring it in. And yeah, it's one of my favorites, in. too. That's right? Good, I one. know. And Which we had Scott? his oh. grandson was going to come speak at the end oh. of that film about what he remembered about his grandfather. So hopefully someday we can bring it back. Yes. Well, that, that sounds like you. Do we have much more time? Uh, we have about a minute left. Okay. So um, not too much. Y'all want to talk as long as you're here. Let's Halloween's Monday. Yes. And we'd like to talk about. What are you going to dress up as? Well, I don't usually dress up. Are okay. you dressing up? No. No. I'm you're eating candy. You're eating you candy. Yeah. Eat you candy. have a baby. You need to stay at home with that new hits. I'll improvise baby. a costume on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come up with something. Yeah. yeah. But um, we, this guy here loves horror movies. He watches one every night the whole month of Octo October. But it's Mon a problem. Like I'm genuinely <laughs> sad when October's over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but Monday night at the Angelica, they're showing Psycho. Oh. So I'm going to do that. Yes. See it on the big screen. Well, yes. They don't, actually, they do them outside, right outside the Angelica. There's a little lawn. Oh, that's cool. And you bring cool. your folding chairs and you sit outside. And that's what I'll be doing. Which really? is great because it's yeah. still so warm here. Yeah. But uh, the, the only two really scary movies out right now are Ouija mm. um, and Medea's how spooky Halloween, yeah. <laughs> which is probably more funny uh, and less spooky, right? Okay. So, yeah. So I've seen. So my pop, my rating system is. Oscar worthy, popcorn worthy, half popped and bag full of kernels. Okay. I give Medea's Halloween or whatever it's called. Boo a Medea Halloween. Yes. Um, I give it popcorn worthy. I really do. Okay. It's mildly popcorn worthy. I think it'll have no shortage of boos. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. It's really funny. But, uh, you know, um, Tyler Perry plays Medea and he plays himself, his son, and he also plays his father in the movie. So that's pretty Oh cute. my gosh. Yeah. He's it's, hilarious. You know, it, he's, it's good. And then um, Ouija. It gets a bag full of kernels oh. rating. Don't waste your time. It's really? Not, yeah. Oh, it got good reviews. No. 
You look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it has an 80%. Okay, because usually Rotten Tomatoes usually and I are you pretty are dead on. Dead on and I just didn't like it. Not worth going. The guy who, t- little boy in E.T., it's the place, plays the priest in it. And then oh, the. Wait, so he's all grown up. All grown up. And then oh, the well. mother in it is, was the mother in the Twilight movies, you know, with, you know, the vampire movies. Oh, yeah. She plays the mother in it. But it, it's dumb. Don't go see it. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm just going to say how many eat milk duds. Fair enough. Yeah. Right? I'm going to watch Medea. Yes, Medea. It's pretty good. <laughs> but thank you so much Libby, for being thank here. You. Thank you for your service to our country. And thank you for this wonderful film festival. Thank you. Uh, everybody get out. Go to Sons of Folk Film Festival. Now to enjoy the movies. You're listening to RNCN, the digital destination for premium talk radio.